so I know what you're thinking. Mandy looks particularly brilliant and radiant today, and it must be because she's more enlightened than I am. But let me tell you, whenever somebody puts on a superficial appearance of being brilliant or radiant, it's more about what they do not want. And in this case, I do not want to be mistaken for a deer. So today we're going to go back to like kindergarten level, maybe first grade, I'm not really sure, and learn math or unlearn rather. So we're going to examine what we learned and what assumptions there were at the very beginning in order to go on and later do seemingly complex math problems. Um, so starting off with addition and subtraction, what do I already need to know? I need to know counting and I need to know numbers. So counting is already addition because we have one and we have two and we have three. So it's increments of one that we're adding on. So the way that you teach kids this is by using items that are actually present and showing them this. So this is one leaf, this is two leaves, this is three leaves. And then what happens if I take, oh wait, there's four here. What happens if I take one away? How many do I have? And then they can count one, two, three. So what happens when we take four away from three? Okay, so there's one, two, three. There's no more leaves. So in order to take four away, in order to go into what I do not have, I have to think a leaf. There is no leaf. There's no this. There can't, I can't make this absent. I can't. I can take it out of the screen, but I have to think a leaf. So kids can only understand at first what's in front of them. And in order to even do that much, there has to be the concept of possession. So what I have can then be taken away. But it can't actually be taken away. What it is is the addition of a thought of something that isn't present. So in order to understand numbers at all, I, the number isn't the leaf, it is a representational thought for the leaf. So instead of leaf, or directly seeing the leaf, one. This represents two, and the number represents the thing, and the thing represents the number, so we have two. So in order for me to have a negative, I have to have the addition of a thought. So this is the same idea as debt, and it's the same idea as creation. So realizing that there is no such thing as exclusion or negativity, there is, it's not that you need to avoid being negative, okay? It's that there is no such thing as negativity. There is nothing that without a representational thought calling it negative or calling it bad, that is negative. So you can see how presence or what's di we're directly aware of the perception of these leaves and there being space around leaf. Here is leaf and here is not leaf. See that? So in one thing, we already have two things. So when we take away the direct awareness, the placeholder is thought, which actually has nothing to do with these leaves, which I want to point out, there are leaves everywhere. Like in my, from what I can see without getting up and walking, there are like, that. I can't even estimate how many leaves there are. Infinite, like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be able to count them. So, and then, like, the idea of possession. Like, like I guess, 
I could, this could have some value. Like if I was going to do a school project about the different uh, leaves in the forest and I wanted to teach what a beech leaf was, then this could have some value and I would take it with me. But what's valueless and what's abundant, the idea of possession doesn't really apply. Um, so how awareness actually is, is it's abundant and there's no exclusion. There's no limitation. And so those thoughts about it simply don't apply. So going back further in simplicity, before I can have the idea of possession, before I can um, add and subtract and Katie has three leaves and gives Daniel two leaves and how many leaves does Daniel have? Before there's the concept of possession, there's the concept of me and mine and others and separate selves. So possession is based upon that. So a mistaken belief that gets um, assigned to awakening, which is simply unlearning this, is that there is actual attainment and there's actual development that happens for somebody. And then we can compare development of someone when in reality, all that's going on is assumptions about who and what has. That's all that's going on. The entire belief of knowledge and the idea of knowledge being gained or accumulated is based on the belief of the separate self or the person and then possessing. Um, the word ignore, if you look up the etymology, it's two things put together. The I stands for not, and the nor is like gnosis or knowing, so literally not knowing. And originally, it meant innocently glancing over or innocently being unaware of something. And then <laughs> all of our connotations pertaining to the separate self or the me it's then a purposeful decision or desire to rid oneself of something. Um, but every time you think, I don't want to think of that thing, you're actually thinking of that thing. That's just how thought works. It's a lot like we're rickrolling ourselves and how fitting that the rickroll song is never going to give you up. I just... I could not have written it any better. So the word rid originally meant to clear. It didn't have the connotation of good riddance or um, something nasty or unwanted that we wanted to get rid of. It simply meant to clear. And it's already completely clear. There is no absence there of knowing and there is no knowing. There is no absence of you and there is no you. It's really not um, exciting and it's really not mundane. It's prior to it and already complete. 